I'm going to completely exploit Age of Wonders 4 to beat the hardest difficulty with the weakest unit. The weakest unit I'm talking about is, of course, the scout. Okay. Scouts aren't really made for combat. Their main purpose is to explore the world map. The scout's in-game description even goes so far as to explicitly say that they're weak in combat. But something has changed. A power older than time has returned. Obviously, they're talking about the power of cheese, because I'm about to use it to turn the scout into an unstoppable monster that can win me the entire game. Now I'll admit that if you don't put any resources into your scouts, they are borderline useless in combat. They have a very weak attack, no special abilities, no armor or resistance, and the lowest starting health in the game. But none of that matters, because Age of Wonders 4 is an amazing game with tons of customization options that I'm going to use to make my scouts completely overpowered. I've created a game with two opponents and set the difficulty to Brutal. Instead of choosing one of the pre-made race and ruler options, I'm going to build my own. I need to pick the perfect combination to make my scouts the strongest unit in the game. I chose Ratkin for my character's look, and next up is my body and mind traits. For body, I'm choosing Spider Mounts. This makes it so my ruler, and more importantly, all of my cavalry units will ride giant spiders into combat. As I'm sure you know, scouts are a cavalry unit so every single scout just gained 10 hit points and the web ability. The hit points are nice, but the web ability is what grabbed my attention here. It allows my scouts to shoot webs at enemies that deal damage and have a chance to immobilize them. For my mind trait, I took adaptable so my units gain experience faster because I'm going to be fighting and winning a lot of battles. Next, I picked my people's culture, but first, Allow me to make a quick confession. This is only my second game of Age of Wonders 4, and I'm going to absolutely dominate the hardest difficulty by abusing the weakest unit. But you're also going to see a lot of suboptimal choices throughout the video, because I've only learned enough about the game to find out how to cheese it. Anyways, I chose the Dark Culture, but I wouldn't be surprised if there was a better fit for this strategy. My next extremely important choice is the Society Traits. Since I'm using Scouts, Shadow Walkers was an obvious choice. It starts me off with an extra Scout unit and an upgrade for all of my Scouts movement speed. I also chose Scions of Evil because it sounded like fun to get rewarded for having an evil alignment, especially since I'm going to be attacking everything in sight. And finally, for my first magic tome, I went with the Tome of the Horde, which has multiple improvements for tier one units like my scouts. Then my Wizard King Arathor the Broken set out with his Spider Rider Snipers to conquer the world. All right, I'm loading in and uh, Scions of Evil is showing up on the screen for some reason. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's because my mouse was over where it was going to be when the animation showed up. That's kind of fun. So anyway, there's my whole build. This Marauder Guard is right at my border, so they gotta go. So I'm gonna hit auto battle first and see how at the outcome is without any input from me. <gasps> Slaughtered, absolutely butchered, lost all my units. But in Age of Wonders 4, after you auto battle, you can click retry and go in to do the battle manually. Okay, so I've positioned my units just outside the range of my enemy's attacks. I'm hoping they move forward that's good enough. They're close enough for me to start hitting. So I'm going to go ahead and hit them with my first web attack. I can only get the two melees, but look at that. That's beautiful. I just did 30 damage and immobilized both of them. Now I can just shoot them with regular attacks because I'm not in any danger from them hitting me. The ranged unit is going to be able to get a hit in, but I don't think they can kill me. Okay, let's see what the damage is from the caster. That's a bit of damage, but that's fine. We lived, didn't lose any units. I'm okay with that. And with my ruler repositioned, I can use web on all of them at the same time. Now that's so much damage, that's insane. Spider mounts are so broken, they're so strong. So I'm gonna reposition my last scout over here so that they're in position to use web next turn. Because web costs all three action points, you have to use it at the start of your turn. And that's, that's 30 damage from a tier one scout unit. 30 damage in one turn. That's insane. That's not even counting the immobilize. That's still absolutely incredible. Oh, another ranged attack. Okay, but didn't get the kill. So I'm gonna be able to come out of this combat. Instead of losing all of my units, I'm going to be able to keep all of them 
no casualties whatsoever. A perfectly acceptable outcome for my first fight. I also gained 63 draft income from the fight, so the scout that I was working on in my capital city was instantly finished, so I can add them to my army. And I don't have enough gold for another one, so I'm going to just go ahead and cancel my building I'm working on and make a scout instead, because I want to fill this army out. My hero got a level up from the fight, so I'm going to take Battle Seeker training because it adds 20% damage to my tier 1 units, so those web abilities are going to hit even harder now. I headed over to this infestation to take it out, and I hit auto combat expecting to need to do manual, but they wiped it themselves with almost no damage. And I got a nice weapon that I can put onto my hero. So I headed to the next fight. It says it's a high risk battle. Okay, let's auto combat and see if I need to do main. No, I don't need to do manual combat at all. They destroyed it. But I was curious what happened. So I hit the watch replay button to see what the AI did while it was controlling the units. And I mean, it's completely predictable. They just get in range and just absolutely pepper them with web attacks. They do, it does so much damage. It's completely broken. There's, this is absolutely unfair. I'm sure that a human player would be able to fight against this a lot more effectively, but the AI has no idea how to handle this. And it doesn't just work against small, weak enemies. This camp has a tier four massive unit with a ton of health, but anything that can get immobilized is basically worthless against me. This big guy does have one range attack, which he hits me with, but it's not enough to kill any of my units. So I pretty much just dominate the entire flow of the battle, keeping him from being able to do any significant attacks against me and finishing him off with no trouble at all. Fatality. I'm going to use all the resources that I'm gaining from winning these fights to advance my throne city as quickly as possible into the higher tiers. And I also need gold, so I'm gonna go ahead and get some gold mines so I can purchase the units I need. My hero leveled up to five, which means I get a special ability. And I'm going to take the summon elemental ability because it'll allow me to bait enemies into position with a unit that I don't mind if it takes any damage at all. It makes no difference. I can summon it every single fight. I also came across one of the AIs in this area and decided to settle an outpost to try and keep tabs on them and make sure they don't grab this land for themselves. Then I sent my army over to Lob's Hollow, an ancient wonder where there's a big fight waiting for me. These fights usually have a negative status effect, but this one just has spider webs, which I'm really not too worried about. The auto battle did not go well. I got absolutely butchered, completely wiped out. So it's time to go in and manually take care of this myself. I opened the fight by summoning an elemental so that I can put it up in the front lines to take all of the hits if possible. And as luck would have it, I got an elemental that has a large AOE immobilize ability, so he'll be perfect for the front line. Then, after putting my spiders in position, I was able to get a pretty good sequence of damage down with some web attacks and sent my elemental in to the middle, hoping that it would draw their fire. The elemental's quake ability did some pretty impressive damage and synergizes really well with my spiders, but I'm up against enemy spider mounts, so they also have the web attack and were able to get quite a bit of damage back on me. But it doesn't matter because I got my hits in first and my hits were much harder than theirs, so I was able to wipe them out before they were able to do too much to me. And I chased down the final spider and finished it off, clearing out a battle that I lost all my units in instead keeping all my units with minimal damage, to be honest. I also finished some arcane research and got the Blaze of the Horde ability, which does fire damage for each friendly tier one unit. And I'm running scouts, so this is a perfect spell for me to use. I headed into a fight eager to try out my new fire damage spell, and this would be the perfect chance because I got butchered in this one too. So it's back to manual combat for me. Using my new spell, I'm able to deal damage to enemies before the fight even starts. So it's very, very helpful because I can start hitting the big guys before they get a chance to get too close. And by now you're probably seeing a theme because I go into auto combat and my army gets absolutely butchered. The game thinks that the battle is impossible, but actually all I have to do is take my scouts and abuse the web attack to the max and they can't fight back at all. I just go in and just blast them all down. It truly is insanely broken. I never went into a fight during this game thinking that it was impossible, thinking that there's no way I could I could come out of it on top. 
because there is always a way for me to outmaneuver my enemies using the web ability, using the superior movement speed that the scouts have, and just, you know, I can run away, I can hit them with the fire spell. There's so many options, and it transitions perfectly into mid game by transitioning over into Dark Knights. I was actually on the fence about whether I should use Dark Knights or I should do an only scouts game, but I thought it would be nice to show how the advantage the scouts give you in the early game can transition into stronger units for the mid and the late game. And the late game units that I have in mind are not really going to get much of a chance to be a part of this video because I win the game before I even get to late game, but I will have a chance to at least mention them right at the end. I took another summoning skill for my hero's ability because summoning meat shields works perfectly. And I went off to another very difficult ancient wonder fight. I ran the auto battle and once again, butchered absolutely butchered might be one of the worst butcherings that has happened so far there's these giant dragons that are terrifying but again it is not going to matter this strategy is so broken these units are so exploitable every so often i do take some damage i do have units that get some hits in but the immobilizability i'm positioned perfectly just outside the range of these dragons ability to hit me so i can immobilize them and then just break them down with ranged attacks with my fire damage spell it has the breath attack that goes three hexes away and it only hits my elemental which i'm okay with the elemental getting hit it does not matter i can summon a new one every single combat with the with the bone dragons dead the fight was wrapped up so quickly and you can see the health that i have before and after didn't really change at all and i wiped the floor with these enemies so easy one of the AIs declared war on me and came after my city, and the auto battle, no surprise, I was defeated. So I went into manual combat and absolutely butchered them. When the big battles take place, it's a little bit trickier because you really need to focus on one side of the fight first and use your summons to delay the units on the other side. But what's fun about the big battles is that because I'm not losing any units in most of them and my enemies are losing a ton of units, usually by the time I get to the end of the fight, the enemies are completely demoralized and try to run. Like a lot of them try to run. It's not just like a couple. It's like six to nine units are trying to flee from me and I just get to chase them down and slaughter them. The other AI declared war on me too, uh, like pretty quickly after the first one did. Thankfully not at the exact same time. I went into the auto battle and actually won against so many units, but I lost a unit and I don't like losing units. I know that I don't have to. So I went into manual combat and did the battle better. I wasn't expecting the enemy to have a second, even stronger army on the way, but let me tell you, it was a glorious sight to behold. Their audacity to challenge me, to defy my might, was nothing short of foolishness. They made one fatal mistake that sealed their fate. They didn't bow down before their spider overlords and beg for mercy. So let this be a lesson to all who dare oppose me. Throw your weapons down and beg for mercy, and perhaps you'll be spared. But defy me, and you shall meet the same fate as those who foolishly believed they could stand against my reign. I had planned to use Tyrant Knights to end the game because their demoralizing heavy charge can lower enemy morale, so I figured the fights would probably end even sooner with more enemies fleeing, but I just didn't get the chance because I was already so close to winning the game and I just didn't see the point in drawing it out any longer. Because I think I've proven my point. Spider mounts are the most powerful unit in this game for cheesing the combat and exploiting the AI. There is no fight that you can't win with a full army of spider scouts. And just imagine how much more powerful this could be if somebody who actually knew game mechanics other than how to use spider mounts was in command. And with that, my second game of Age of Wonders 4 on the hardest difficulty was over. I had won on turn 46 with really no trouble at all, and Aerithor the Broken ascended to my pantheon, bringing me up to pantheon level 6. Spiders for the win.